Hi, I'm Stephen Bauman, and in this video, I'm going to show you the fastest, most effective way that I've discovered to make a really good, accurate cast painting. I guess I should also explain to you now why you would want to do a cast painting in the first place. Cast paintings are great because the surface of a plaster cast is totally white. We don't have any interference in between us seeing the planes as they shift toward or away from the light and the value that those planes exhibit. For this reason, cast painting is a really excellent project for beginning students who are just figuring out how to make a visual impression using oil paint. All the clips that you're going to watch in this video are part of a very extensive lesson that I made for my Patreon students. It's available to everybody subscribed at the Atelier tier, along with all of the other lessons that I've made for my Patreon over the last three and a half years. This video is going to give you an overview of the process, and I'm going to tell you the actionable lessons that you need to learn at each stage of the project. The first stage of the project is going to be transfer drawing. The best thing that I can tell you about transfer drawing is that it's an efficient way to allow you to address issues of accuracy and proportion at an early stage in your painting process before we even get to applying oil paint to the canvas. This means that the first brush strokes you're going to put onto the canvas in the beginning of the painting are going to have a much higher probability of being totally accurate at that stage. This level of organization early on in a painting is really going to help you if you have a difficulty handling slippery oil paint and it's a medium that maybe isn't totally comfortable for you. A transfer drawing is supposed to be a really great version of the block-in stage of the drawing. So we're going to have simplified information. That's going to mean a lot of straight lines and clear angle breaks. Aside from those things, it's just like any other drawing that you're starting out. The headline thought to remember here is keep it simple. Now what I've got to start the transfer process is this A4 sheet of tracing paper. I'm going to go ahead and tape that up onto my drawing board. The important thing for us to track is actually going to be that perfect vertical that I drew onto the paper. That is the axis that will really matter when we transfer this onto the canvas. Now you'll notice also that I only taped it at the top. Uh, this is because I'm going to want to be able to kind of lift this up and look underneath if there's some ambiguity to the information that I'm looking at. We have to draw over every single one of those lines that we drew in the original work. These shapes kind of have a life of their own, that they live without value. And you can see the complexity of that design, you know, uh, looking through this veil that, that's um, slightly obscuring what you drew underneath. You can still see the power of the design inside of that. Just give yourself a double and a triple check that you got everything where you wanted it to go. And then pretty much we're ready to get this onto the canvas. Now, in order to get that dry media on, I'm gonna go ahead and tape this up in reverse. Then I'm gonna take my soft B charcoal from Nitrum and it's just a matter of going through and once again, adding charcoal to all those spaces where the lines you created were. The only thing that I can say that's very important that you, you do in this is that one, you make sure that you cover all of the areas that you're meant to cover and that two, you use a very soft charcoal because that will produce a darker line in the transfer process. All right, now I'm gonna find all my registration marks and make sure that this fits inside of them so that everything will go exactly as expected. I'm gonna firmly tape that back on. Now for this process, I tend to like to use a mechanical pencil and one with a really, really soft lead. That way, when I do make a mark, I can usually see that it's a little bit darker than the others because depending on how systematic you are going through this, there's always that possibility that you lose your lines. Now this is a, just a pretty mechanical process. It's going through and making sure that you, you know, cover thoroughly every line that you have. Uh, and then after we get through with this part, uh, what I want to do next actually is really, really super important. Um, is that you want to lift this up and just double check that you're getting an impression. Sometimes if you don't have enough charcoal on or, or you have um, not pressed hard enough, there's a lot of different reasons, but you can wind up not getting the impression that you're looking for. This is about correct in terms of how it should look when transferred properly. So for now, we're going to call the transfer drawing complete. The next stage that we're going to get into is monochromatic underpainting. This stage is really important because it is the moment in the project where you translate the shapes that you designed in graphite into oil paint. It also gives you a really clear cut period of time where you can use your oil paint pretty much like you would a stick of charcoal or a graphite pencil. Now, why would you want to do that in the first place? Oil paint traditionally has been a very difficult medium for students to solve. 
I talked before about how it's a kind of slippery medium and you've got dirty brushes and paint rags and solvents and mediums and all sorts of weird stuff in the studio that you don't have to deal with when you're actually just drawing. What making a monochromatic underpainting allows you to do is to just focus on one thing at a time. Rather than trying to break all the twigs in the bundle at once, you're just going to take one out and snap it very easily. I'm going to call this an underpainting. What have we accomplished here? We have the entire subject on the canvas, right? We have a highly polarized light and shadow relationship uh, characterized by a very unified light shape, uh, just a couple of transitional halftone edges in, in very key places, uh, and then a almost solid duotone shadow that when you squint down really holds well together. The other thing that this is going to do is because of the pigments that we've used, it's going to dry really fast and it's also going to dry to a nice firm paint film. So by the time I've given this a day or two to dry, I should be able to scumble in halftone values over the top of this and not disturb actually what's sitting underneath. So we've really made into a, a concrete feature, right? Uh, the transfer drawing information that we had, we've elaborated it, we've transformed it into an oil painting language, uh, and we're set for the challenges that are going to come up when we put our first pass of opaque paint onto the surface. The next stage of the painting is going to be super intensive and really difficult. We're going to be going from zero, which is to say a flat surface, very little value on it, all the way to a fully refined volumetric painting of a cast that has all the values, edges, transitions, shapes, and light effect that you associate with a fully finished oil painting. This is all going to take place in one single painting session. Now, when I completed this stage of the painting, it took me about six or seven hours. And that's with all the other preparations that I'd made, the transfer drawing, the pre-mixed color values, all my brushes and materials totally ready to go, everything totally prepared for peak efficiency. The reason that I choose to try to do all of this in one painting session is because oil paint is at its most efficient when painted wet into wet. You're going to think about making transitions in between shadow and light. These transitions are going to be painted most easily when all sections of the gradation are freshly painted. You're also going to think about making soft atmospheric edges in the parts of the subject which are further away in depth. When both sides of that soft edge are freshly painted, it becomes relatively easy to create the kind of modulation that you're looking for. Blocking in the light shape is a pretty complicated thing, if I'm perfectly honest. And I was trying to think about how I could break this down into smaller skills or into maybe an example that could show you a slightly simpler process than you could use to orient yourself in the kind of larger goal that we have of, of getting this to a place of, of coming to a conclusion, right? So I thought that I would take this area of the neck, right? and Rather than thinking about the entire light shape that we have, thinking about an individual form, like the volume or roundness of the neck. We're going to start out by just choosing a local value, which is to say we're, we're going to take an average of what all the values within this form are in the light shape, and we're going to block that in from side to side. We're then going to be conscious of the direction of light and the direction of the gradation, which is to say, which direction does it get darker in? So if the light is coming from the right hand side, going towards the left hand side, it is going to get darker. So the direction of the gradation is darker to the left. And we're going to start to add that dark half tone in. After we've done that, then we're going to go into the lightest light in that form and we're going to key that lightest light in the form, and we're going to call that pretty well blocked in. Ideally, that is going to take place everywhere. That being said, all of this takes a lot of work and a lot of care, so I'm going to go just at the pace that the work required allows me to go. Do not forget in this moment, right? Please do not forget in this moment. When you're painting light shapes on the far left-hand side of this cast, right? That means really far away from the side that is facing the light. You are going to encounter a lot of times what is a light area within a darker context. This is a, a place where you can make a mistake so many times by painting it too light because it looks light in relationship to what's around it, but in fact, it is a dark value when you compare it to anything on the light side of the subject. So I implore you, if you're painting your, your light shape over here, compare it to the values on this side. Squint down. Believe me, more often than not, it should be darker than you think. I'm gonna call this stage of the cast painting finished. 
There's going to be a layer of glazes and scumbles that comes after this, but I'm going to have to wait several days, if not maybe a week, until this is fully dry to kind of go back in and tickle some of those areas with just the right amount of thin paint to get the effects that I'm looking for. Now we come to the final section in the process of making this oil painting, which is super important because as hard as we might try to make that first full painting session absolutely perfect, inevitably there are going to be some things that slip through the cracks. There's going to be a shape that's a little bit inaccurate. There's going to be a value that's a little bit too dark or too light. There's going to be a transition that's a little bit too hard and we need a solution to get back into our painting without disrupting the entire surface. So what do we do? Here we turn to glazing and scumbling. I talk extensively about these in the full lesson, but I'll give you a quick breakdown here. A glaze is a semi-transparent application of transparent pigment onto the surface of an oil painting. A scumble is a semi-transparent application of opaque pigment onto the surface of an oil painting. They are a relatively non-invasive way to go back in, change an edge, change a shape, to essentially make small amendments to your painting without going in and repainting the entire thing. What we're trying to do in making these small changes is to carry our painting over the line from being pretty good to really great. And that means accuracy and clarity. I want you to remember this. A little bit of medium and the right pre-mixed color values are probably the best way to get you to a place where you can make effective glazes and scumbles on the surface of your painting to dial up a little bit further the softness of transitions, the accuracy of shapes, and eventually the rich and beautiful light effect of your cast painting without opening up the whole process again and repainting the entire surface. So we've reached the end of the project now, but I just want to run through some of the stages that we used to get to this place. We started with a transfer drawing to establish the proportions and shape design. We moved on to a monochromatic underpainting so we could establish those proportions that we found in drawing in oil paint. We then painted the entire painting in one session. All the values, transitions, light effects, etc. We did it in one pass. Then we glazed and scumbled just a little bit so we could amend and tweak some of the design features and some of the values that we wanted to improve from the previous stage. We used these glazes and scumbles to amend the painting and tweak it a little bit so we could push it from being pretty good to being exceptional. These cast painting exercises for me as a student were invaluable. Everything that I needed to know about foundational painting exercises was contained in this process and really pushed my work to a much higher level than it was when I started. If you want to get into this lesson, it's pretty deep and extensive. It's all on my Patreon page at the Atelier tier. That is the $10 subscription level. And with that, you can access also all of the other tutorials that I've put on there over the years. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.